sometimes struggle to get up in the morning or wind down for bed at night. I used to find it so difficult. I woke up with no sense of positivity and brightness. I was void of motivation and spirit. This changed completely when I started waking up with a Lumi body clock. These incredible devices mimic the light and colour of a real sunrise and sunset, transforming the experience of waking up and going to sleep completely. Rather than being suddenly woken up with an alarm clock, the Lumi body clock will wake you up gradually with a natural sunrise. The Lumi body clock has been shown to improve the quality of sleep and awakening and to boost mood and productivity in clinical trials. You can personalise your sunrise and sunset from 15 to 90 minutes with their clinically tested unique natural light and more than 20 sleep and wake sounds. We all deserve to sleep well and to wake up feeling fresh. So if you're finding this a challenge and you want to try a new approach, go to lumi.com. I was just always around it. My my mum, I think she played the piano when I was a baby and I was just on her lap. I was just always around the piano. Um, and, you know, just always playing the piano even before I even knew how to play it. So, um, and my parents always played music um, and instruments and had music in the house and always sent me to music lessons, which is amazing of them. Um, and then I just remember when I was um, about 13, I had this really great piano teacher. Um, and I think I probably had about six months of lessons with him and he was probably banging his head against the wall. <laughs> <laughs> going why isn't she doing any practice and then all of a sudden I just did and I just liked it and um and that was it and why so did that's you, it <laughs> do you not do you uh recall why it is that you uh wanted to start practicing and what did you do when you started practicing um I no I don't know why it was just it was just out of the blue it's not that I ever I just I guess I always assumed that music was just a part of everything and it was there. Um, and I, no, I don't know. I think I just maybe practiced and went, oh, I can do this actually. Um, and perhaps that just sort of gave me enough momentum to get to the next thing. And then that just had its own sort of like snowball boulder effect. Um, I, I don't know. Uh, why I started singing lessons around about the same time as well and I was desperate to sing and the hilarious thing is I still don't actually think I'm like a very good singer but I think I've turned into an expressive singer and um and but I was just I was desperate to sing and I had this amazing singing teacher who's now one of my dear friends um she's got the most beautiful voice and um and I was in just in awe of her uh of just her voice and how just like free and great it was. And I still am actually, she's probably one of the, the singers who I still just feel that way about. So yeah, I don't know, it was lots of things. And wh when you started practicing piano, did you, did you play along to records? Did you practice scales? Did you like play along to sheet music? What, what, what did you um, do? Inspired you. definitely didn't do scales <laughs> <laughs> no I didn't do that I don't think any single piano teacher has ever managed to get me to play scales even at university my poor teacher <laughs> um Chris he's so lovely um he, I, he never managed to make me play scales um uh no I look I always um I've always played a lot by ear but I but that was just always for fun I um I did that I suppose separately and just you know after I had practiced um and I was I was always just really fascinated um about the way that music is structured and how it works I just um I was just obsessed with jazz um even sort of as a I don't know from 10 or something like that because it was just fascinating to me just like it was this world that I wanted to understand that I couldn't understand that was inaccessible to me. And it frustrated me so much. It was probably one of the biggest frustrations of my childhood and adolescence that I didn't understand jazz. And I know that's kind of a wanky. I ended up doing, um, like I did a whole year of jazz piano at university. I was terrible. I sound like I'm better than I am. I'm actually really not that good. Um, but I did a whole year 
Uh, well, and your, your songs and your your record uh, are, are amazing. So uh, you know, it seems like you're being very very modest. Uh, but what do you mean when you say that you couldn't understand jazz? Like, do you mean that you couldn't play jazz or you couldn't understand? Like, w w what is there? To oh God, no! I still, I still, I still can't play jazz. Let's get that straight. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, no, I couldn't understand it. But I did a year of uni, and it just took me a year to tune in. It's like all of a sudden I just went, "Oh man, I get it," um, because it's a language, and so. Um, it's like, because you've got these chord structures that move um, quite quickly in succession. And, you know, for each of those chord structures, you've got some tones that are more important than others. And then they, you know, what you're meant to try and do is, um, I suppose, improvise um, and reflect some of those, you know, more important key tones, and then just do that very quickly. So you would play a line through the through a chord structure to sort of outline a chord. And, um, you see, I didn't know this. Um, and, and then even in, you know, even in first year university, I was, I'd been there about six months and, and like a very good saxophone player in my small ensemble, he said, why don't you try playing a two, five, one for a change? And I sort of went, what's a two, five, one. And, um, and, and then I asked everyone and no one would tell me it was so ironic and funny. Um, because, uh, cause he was like, Man, you'll just know what a two five one is. And then I asked my piano teacher, and he's like, "Well, I don't believe in two five ones." <laughs> he was sort of too smart for two five ones. Why um, do and even two five one. I, I think I think he was like more focused on like modal and sounds at that time. But like I, who need the basic grammar of a of a thing, like was not even at that point. What, so, um, because uh, I've heard uh, a couple of people, uh, maybe I read it in an interview recently. I heard someone yeah. say in an interview, I think it was the uh, the rapper Dave, who I'm a big fan of, but he was like yeah, talking yeah. about how he plays piano and he was saying, um, yeah. oh, I'm very interested in modal playing. I had no idea what yeah. he meant by that. What, do, what does modal playing mean? Oh my goodness. I'm, you know, people who I studied with are gonna probably hear this and, and like, I'm gonna get it wrong. And, <laughs> and they're all gonna <laughs> go. <laughs> no, no, okay, so. Um, uh, like a modal sound, if you've got um, if you've got a key, you've got like a, a tone that sounds like home. It sounds like home bass, right? And then at different sort of intervals within that key, you've got different tones um, where you sort of a arrive at. And, and I suppose it sounds like um, it's a different. Um, it's a different part of the scale. It's a different sound. It's like being in a different room of a house. Um, um, but let's just take, uh, like if you're in C major, you know that when you get to the third, that's going to sound quite happy because it's a, a major tonality and you've got that third um, interval, um, which is oh, one, two, three, four, five, five semitones. Um, if you moved that whole scale, if you just shifted it up one and you started on the, like if you're in C, if you started on a D and you played up that scale, but you didn't um, say alter any of the, um, if you're on the piano, you didn't play any black notes, you just played white notes. The interval between the first and the third degree of that scale would change. It would um, become smaller to be four tones. And so then that would have a minor sound. And so you get these variations um, through all of the degrees of the scale. And so wherever you start, you know, along that, um, let's just say C major scale on the, on the piano, um, you get different intervals between different degrees of the scale. And, and so you get these different um, relationships to the tonic, to the one you start on. You know, so they have different sounds and so that, and those different sounds are very characteristic of that modality say. So if you start, on the, the second degree of like a C major scale, you start on a D mm. and you just play white notes up to the next D that's called a Dorian scale. And so you've got these um, uh, sounds that are particular to a Dorian modality. Um, but then you get all these weird ones and you start on the flat, whatever, and you go and you alter them and you just go, oh yeah, that sounds like a rah, 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 Spanish gypsy, whatever. And I don't know about this. <laughs> Needless to say, I cannot play these things. <laughs> But when, um, when would you, because yeah. like, if you're writing, because you're an amazing songwriter, 
uh, from what you. I've heard. So, but if you're writing a song, I mean, I just cannot imagine, and th there must be people out there because, you know, the, the world is so vast, but there must be people out there who are yeah. like, oh, I know, I'll stick in a nice Lydian mode here. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm probably saying it all wrong. You see, this is what, this is what jazz musicians do that I cannot do. Like um, do you know what? No, I don't now. Like, I've never really thought in modes. I just, um, but I recognise something when I'm doing it. So, um, I mean, the more common thing to do, I reckon, is if you if you're in like a minor key and you just, and you don't want it to sound like just really minor, you want it to sound just a little bit different, you might um, play the major six instead of the flat six. And so then you have that, like it's a slightly more major sound and that's like a very Dorian sound, but you might just do it one time. Like you, you might just do it in like the, the third verse just for like a change, you know, just something that's like, oh yeah, that's just slightly, it's not quite the thing that we had, just like that little bit different. Um, I mean, that's an example. I mean, I've never done that exact thing, but it, it's like- I know, I know. I don't know, it, it's, it's not as complex. I would never use it in a complex way. I, I'm really, I try and just sound simple, you know? Yeah, but those, those yeah. things, I know what you're getting at. Like sometimes the mm. great songwriters, if you look at, look at their work, a lot of, well, in a pop context, at least jazz, mm. yeah. uh, I would second, I don't understand jazz, but I actually don't understand jazz, whereas I think you do understand That's it. okay, you and me both. No, no, I've got, I've got a vague outline of what it is. But, but um, in pop, you see lots of, you know, normal chords, normal, like, you know, three note chords or whatever uh, for piano. And, yeah. then, and then occasionally in these amazing pop songs, you'll just get this one, like, really, like, spicy chord that they've stuck in. Uh, in yeah say the third verse or wherever or or just a chain yeah. that's like whoa I did not yeah. think that that is what makes well I would say that's what makes uh, a lot of great pop songs um yeah. how do you think do you think all of those chords were put in and all of those like cool changes were put into pop songs uh because of a knowledge of theory and and that type of thing or do you think oh, it, like, they just heard it do, do you know what I I reckon you can make an educated guess. I think it changes for everyone, but you know, you you look at the songs of some of those like really amazing songwriters and you just see stuff again and again and you're like, oh yeah, I know, you know, that was really clever and like, what a great choice. And that's so great and amazing that you thought of that thing. And, and it's, you can tell it's like, it's really intentional, like particularly, you know, just like moving out of a key center to like another key center or like going somewhere really interesting for the bridge. It's so intentional. Like you can just tell with some people, but, um, but I think some people know, like, I think some people just really organically go, oh, that sounds good. And then do that. Um, yeah. I mean, look, I can't, look, I have got no idea. I can't profess to speak for really anyone other than myself, but I think I've started to recognize things in other people's writing. And who are, um, I certainly have like moments where I go, oh my God, that's so clever. <laughs> and who are so, some people where uh, some of the artists, some of the songwriters who you consider to be really, really good, who you would listen to for pleasure? Ooh, um, this is, oh, I'm probably going to just like throw a bunch of random stuff at you. Um, I guess the stuff I've been listening to recently, I've just had, I've just been listening to Little Feet for like four months straight. Um, yeah, Lau George, I just, I think he's amazing. I think he's an amazing singer. I think he's an amazing lyricist and I think he's an amazing songwriter. I think he's super cool. Um, I went through this big Wichita lineman phase, um, oh, Jimmy God. Webb. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, I love it. Um, Do you like I... the Glen Campbell version? Sorry? Do you like the Glen Campbell version of that as well? Yeah, I do. Yeah. I mean, I think it's such a beautifully written and structured song that, you know, I just like this. lots of versions that I've heard, you know, like there's the, like the, the song remains true to itself, you know? Incredible. Song. I, yeah. Because it's got such a, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm in awe of, of that song. Um, I listen to, oh, I've been listening to like just a couple of songs of Bonnie Raitt's that I really like. Um, I've been listening to, there's a David Byrne song that I really like. It's called Strange Overtones. And I don't know, that one's just, it's been one that's just been in a playlist of mine for like two years and I just keep coming back to it and I'm just not sick of it. Sure. Um, Solange, Cranes in the Sky. I love the, 
the drums and bass of that. And I, and I was really upset because I heard her um, song exploder thing of it and I thought she wrote all of it, but those like they were stems that they just found in the studio. And I was like, oh, that's so good. Um, but I think she's super original. Um, I was at a, oh, I was at a, a warehouse party maybe a month ago and in Darwin, which is hilarious and fun. Um, and they were playing like these really hip DJ sets, like way too cool for me. I didn't even know what was going on. And then all of a sudden they played Fleetwood Mac and everyone was singing, like every single person was singing along to Rhiannon. And I just went, oh my God. And in that setting, it just translated so well and it was so current and so modern. And you just go, oh my God, this is such a great um, example of how a song is timeless. Yeah. Um, yeah, who else, man? Brian Blade, I've been listening to him. Um, Lee Follerbeck. And for like totally different reasons too. I like him. I don't even know why I like him, but I just really, really do. Um, sorry, I'm going to stop talking because uh, <laughs> I can no, just no. talk a lot about it. Well, yeah. uh, I, could, I can see that you've got very eclectic taste, but I, I, I mean, all of those artists are incredible. Little, little feet. Uh, mm. As we were saying, I think over email, uh, you or I yeah. think you said you'd um, seen that we had Bill Payne on. Yeah, 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 it, yeah, yeah. Uh, I did. I listened to that one. Yeah, an unbelievably good uh, piano player. Like, uh, sadly, some of the Zoom cut yeah. out. But he, in the middle of the thing, he just started playing piano for like ten minutes. A lot of it I couldn't yeah. play because you couldn't. Like, it just didn't yeah. work uh, with the audience. Yeah. I could kind of make out. He is mm. just like ridiculously good i think he kind of made yeah. the way he was playing like i i'm love like billy joel uh elton or yeah. you name it, but like yeah, yeah yeah no obviously me too no. but yeah but like the way he was playing i don't know i found it more mm. impressive than than even that those guys like it was absolutely ridiculous the way he was playing yeah. um the little yeah. great band when did you when did you discover their music uh it was Admittedly, it was actually only a couple of years ago. Um, I, I actually, I asked a friend of mine whose taste I love and trust. And I just said, oh, look, I need something that's like this and this and this and this and this. Just like, who is like that? Give me people to listen to. And he gave me a little feet. Um, and I've just, and I've just been obsessed with them for the last, oh, probably since then. Um, I actually, I wrote a song off the back of just listening to Little Feet for about a week. Um, and it's like, it's not as good, but like, that's my, that's my little feet one. You know, it's just, it totally just came from, from Have you there. Released it yet? No, no, I'm recording at the moment. I'm, I've been recording for maybe the last month and I've got a whole bunch. Um, yeah, it, it's such a great, it's such a creative and great process. Um, I've got a, I've got a band up here in Darwin and that's the song I love playing with them because it's just. I don't know, they're just the right people for that song particularly. Um, but I actually went down south to South Australia right before they locked down, I was very lucky. And, um, and I've been recording with this, um, uh, these studios, they're called Wizard Tone Studios, but the guy who, who owns it, his name's Jared, he's this amazing drummer as well as a, um, an engineer. And, and poor Jared, I'm like, actually we, we communicate quite well now I think um but I'm so picky because I'll, I'll I'll like sit there as he's mixing it and like trying to dive into the depths of like all the different types of reverb and going no there's something weird like you know and like for half an hour and he's so patient and I'm so pedantic um but it's a lot of fun no so I've been recording um and so I've recorded that song it's called Don't Let Me Down Country Town which I think is quite fun wow. yeah I'm looking forward to that that Thanks. Is, that's um, a title as well. You can kind of tell. Well, the fact that you've said the the little feet reference, and then that's yeah. like you know, you can just tell that it's going to be very good. Uh, <laughs> well, you don't I mean, know yet. You have I mean, not heard it. Pressure on. But I can tell <laughs> it'll be good. I mean, it's a good. It's a good yeah, uh, inspiration point. Uh, so I wanted to talk about because it's been very easy uh, for me to get side uh, sidetracked with all of these interesting things that we've been talking about. Yeah. Sorry. Me too. Sure yeah, yeah. Okay. Produce, uh, your music uh, to my audience and so uh, I wanted to, mm. to know like wh when did you decide to like take music really really seriously and you know to make yeah. uh, 
I think yeah. it's a amazing album. Sometimes I'm there. Uh, Thank you. And Thank you. Yeah, when when what's what's the story there? Um, and, and okay. Yeah. There's a, there's feels- a story. <laughs> The story. I'm going to try and be um, succinct. Um, I was. It was kind of a two-step process, actually. For that for that album, it was a one-step process. But the music thing, um, I I was actually in Germany, and I was studying philosophy of all things. It was amazing. But I was I was sort of right at the beginning of that, and I was in um, Bielefeld, which is a little town in the Midwest, um, and it was the middle of winter. Like it was freezing cold. I didn't know anyone yet, hadn't made friends. And so I was just sort of spending quite a lot of time inside watching Netflix. Um, and I would just, I watched this Netflix show and there was just this one song on it, um, Elegy by Lee Follerbeck. And like, no kidding, I just went, oh my God, what is that song? And it, it just completely shifted everything for me. And I just listened to that whole album of his, it's called Twin Solitude. And I mean, I recognize now it was a trigger and like I would have probably been triggered, you know, by something else if it wasn't that. But I think um, in his songwriting in that album at that time, he brought together just the elements that I had heard separately, but I hadn't heard brought together before. But all of these things that are so, I think, central to and intrinsic to how I feel about music. Um, so he brought these things together in like a sound and I went, oh my God, what is that? And it was I, it was probably like the closest thing to a spiritual experience I've had. And I went, oh my God. So I have to like now clearly move to Montreal because that's where the, the guy's from. That's where the music is being made. So that's where I have to go. So I moved to Montreal um, to write music. And that's, and that's when I wrote that album. Um, and yeah, I, I think I caught something of a feeling there that I really connected with. Um, and so then that, that happened. And then I just, I don't know, I guess since then I've just become so, I mean, I was obsessed with writing songs before, but I just, um, I think it just made me understand that I have a choice. I can just do whatever I want. And I just, I remember thinking really clearly if I've got like 40 or 50 good years of writing songs and like my baseline is like, if I write one good song a year as a baseline, like a good one, I don't mean just a song. I mean, a good one. Um, That's like 50 good songs before I die. I don't know. That's not a lot of like, it's kind of a lot of time, but it's not a lot of time at the same time. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes so sense. like I, yeah, and so I like I just cannot waste any more of it, and like I have a choice, I can do it. It's it's so. I need a piano. That's what I need. That's it. You know, um, and I think like that process proved to me that I just actually could write songs and record them and do the thing I want to do, and then it was like, oh, okay, well, this is it. That's that's it then. That's um, a cool thing uh, to say because it's like so many people let. Uh, life hold them back oh i can do it next year oh i just need to do a few more months working at starbucks and then i'll do it oh like my mum won't let me Uh, whatever it might be yeah have there been any people in your life holding you back uh has there been has there been any (laughs) you don't beat around the bush do you (laughs) no no (laughs) that's a great no that's it's questions uh because i'm that's it no that's 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 a great question it's such a good question um i don't know that i'd ever name them oh yeah i'm not asking you to name them or like but not Do you only know what i mean people, um but have there been have there been like circumstances feelings yeah have there been obstacles uh, to come yeah yeah very much um yes there have um but i suppose i've always felt as though i'm responsible for my emotional self um and and so if there's something to work out, I believe it's my responsibility to, to work that out for myself. Um, yeah, look, I think I would say that um, after I did that year of jazz piano at, at uni, I went and I did um, jazz singing at uni for three years um, and I lost a lot of confidence in that environment. It was, um, 
I would say it was a fairly toxic environment. <laughs> um, I'm really sorry and, for that, but uh, those type yeah, of Yeah, me too, but... Can be, can't they? Yeah. Um, you know, and I don't, I don't need to sort of go into detail about it. I mean, I'm sorry for that too. Um, but I mean, I didn't, I didn't sing for, like not even to myself in the car for like maybe two years after that. My God. Um, oh, yeah, it was so quite, bad. it was quite bad. Um, but musicians then, can be so awful. People who fancy themselves can be such know-it-alls in music, I think. Um, there was a lot of good that came from it too. I mean, now look, I understand jazz a little bit. So, you know, that's great. Um, and I, you know, and there's a couple of people that I'm still connected with who are just dear friends of mine. Um, and look, if I, if I hadn't have done that, I wouldn't feel as though I had enough knowledge to write the things I want to write. Um, you know, so that, I mean, look, there's always good and bad, um, but I would say that that experience was probably, probably the big one that I had to get past. And then, you know, and then just that other thing of, you know, going, oh, well, you're meant to, you know, tick certain boxes in your life and um, have a proper job and all that sort of thing. And, um, and I have to say that like right now, I'm really just, it's almost, I'm just, I feel very pleased with myself that I'm, <laughs> that I'm irresponsible um and because I'm just doing exactly what I what I want to do and I'm just I'm happy I'm so happy you know and I'm productive um and and that's it I do want to say um in that whole process because I've recently had just that amazing amazing interview with Elton John which I just I cannot even get my head around um but that was sort of just the second thing that just allowed me to back myself and just go yeah just just do that that's what you care about do that and like if as much as anything that allowed me to just just yeah back myself and that like what a gift that is do you know what I mean mm. how, how did he hear of your album do you think I have no idea nobody knows it's a mystery um uh, yeah no no one knows cool. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's, as, as it a is, piano it's... player, uh, that must have been. I know. Uh, well, you're a piano player too. You're in an Elton John band. <laughs> yeah. I know you're asking all of these piano questions, and I actually want to ask you the same thing, but then I keep oh, talking. I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. Piano, <laughs> you're a much more experienced piano player than me. I can only play. Uh, I'm not. Uh, you, no, no, you definitely are. I literally only started last year. I, I was playing. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Because uh, I, I came into oh, like. Good for you. That's so good. John yeah. fan. Uh, by being a uh, a fan of his drummer Nigel, uh, and uh, and so I was playing drums by ear before that. But uh, yeah, it, oh it, cool. But yeah, I mean, I'm I'm definitely a fan of of that band. So that's uh, mm. it's very very cool um, that uh, you and also Rocket Hour is a good good radio show. I, I you know I, do, I like yeah yeah beats. Uh, I don't think it's called Beats One. I think it's just called Apple Music now. Uh, but it's a really yeah. cool to um, to still have that level of like passion for discovering new artists. Uh, yeah, yeah, what's, that, what's absolutely. I so has agree. That, has, has that um, been a good, like a really good thing in, in like propelling you forward? I mean, it certainly sounds like it. It's helped you it, with regards to like knowing that you're on the right path. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I don't know. Um, it's really weird. I guess I talked to, you know, after that, I um, I did talk with sort of various people, you know, in the industry in Australia. And it was sort of, it's a funny thing. And look, maybe it's a funny time in the world as well. But, um, but they were sort of like, oh, that's so amazing. Good for you. Good luck. You know, and then it was sort of, it's almost like this thing has happened in, in isolation, just this amazing thing. And that's it. Do you know what I mean? So it's 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 really weird, um, but but in terms of what it does for me, just day to day, and in my life and in my writing, I mean, um, no, it's incredible. Like I said, I'm so productive and I'm so happy. Um, yeah, and like that's it. That's the point. Yeah, absolutely. And so you're recording right now, but what yep. type of now that you're really moving forward and building on on the recordings that you've put out so far what is the kind of split between 
playing piano, songwriting, mm. singing, being creative, you know, really loving life. And it's very inspiring, you you know, talking to you, yeah. you can see that you're in a really good place uh, and yeah, that you're really enjoying what you do. But what is the mm. divide between all the great stuff, all the creative stuff, and then all the boring yep. stuff, like admin, promo, and all of that? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no good. Oh man, I don't know. Is, uh... Yeah, sure. Look, I know I'm. Um... Admittedly, look, it, it's like clearly not my thing. Um, and the thing is that you know, I sort of hear people say it, and I hear myself say it, and I and and then I sort of go, "You're being a bit of a princess about it, aren't you?" I mean, I had, I was talking to this one lady, and she's she's so smart and she's so amazing, and she's like clearly just, you know older and smarter than me um and and I was like yeah man I can't do the Facebook thing and she's like no one can no one likes it let's move on um and I was like okay sure um yeah look it's I'm not I'm not very good at that I really do need someone else to do it I need to find a publicist to be fair because um um because I know the part that I'm good at um, I still, I mean, I still try and, and, you know, I'm, I'm pro I'm for it. I mean, that's how the world works now, but I, um, I mean, you would have a clue, you know, exactly. You, you're brilliant at all of that. I was looking at all of your stuff. Um, I don't, I, I'm not, that gene has not been activated <laughs> yet for me. Well, I, I kind of feel the same way about it as you though, you know, like it is yeah. the tracks from, uh, being creative. Uh, it's a, yeah it's a battle that you have all the time. I mean, do you, do you use TikTok? I'm, I'm not using TikTok. That's, that's for sure. Um, no, I don't. I, I was told that maybe it would be a good idea. Well, do you know, do you know what I do like about TikTok? Um, I did, I did a remote contract for a short time in the Northern Territory. So I was like out in Arnhem Land in um, like Aboriginal communities and the girls are such good dancers. And they're just on TikTok all the time. They're just learning to dance on TikTok. And it was amazing. They're so cool. And they're like trying to teach me how to dance. <laughs> and I'm so uncool. But that like, I just saw this thing where they just have this relationship with TikTok and dancing. And there's just, just really not to curse on your show, but like they're really cool. Um, and that's what I love about TikTok. It's just like that little um microcosm of of thing yeah i don't know i guess it's it's not a it is a platform it seems that is focused on music and dancing and you know that can only be yeah a good thing as i guess in comparison to, to yeah. other platforms uh but so in terms of this album that you're recording now when do you when do you think you'll put it out like how how long have you been yeah. working on it um I mean, look, some of the songs are from a couple of years ago. Some of the songs are from like two weeks ago. Um, um, you know, there's still a couple that I haven't completely finished. And um, I mean, the recording process is so, is so great. It's so creative, you know, like your songs, you have your songs and then you record them and you just try different things and then they turn into something else again. Um, and I look, I think, I mean, hopefully a couple of months. I, I think I'm going to have the recording done within six weeks. But then, you know, there's all of the, then you still got to mix it and put it down and listen after some time. And then, and then it's going to be promoted. And I just don't have a clue how to do that. I like, I'm so, people are going to be listening to this and just laughing, but that's okay. I don't care. Um, I doubt it. Uh, it's it's kind of good to be honest you know like a lot of people uh, seem to have uh, huge teams around them and yeah I know finding an audience without a team it seems or do you have <laughs> a manager no I don't have a team I have um no I've got I've got oh look friends of mine who like I said whose musicality and taste I trust and respect um and you know who's uh, musicians or engineers um I don't know any publicists I don't know any I don't know anyone in the industry like I, I'm just I'm so um not in that world so no in terms of like those sorts of people I don't have any of those people around me but I do have really good musicians and engineers around me and I also 
know exactly my tastes. Like I know what I like and I know what I don't like. And I know now I'm learning. It's actually a really lovely process. I'm just, I'm learning about recording techniques and mixing and, and all of these things. And, um, you know, and the more you learn, the more you hear, you know, and now I'm in pubs and I'm just going, you know, that wasn't recorded well, but it was mixed very well. You know? <laughs> so I'm learning an awful lot. Um, um, yeah, so I've got those sorts of people around me. Well, that's most important. Which is good because... That helps me Well, it. yeah, because that's the thing that actually helps you achieve the thing that you want to make. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. It's, it's a shame that uh, the good music doesn't rise immediately to the top, but I think it always finds its way there, even in today's environment where there's quite a lot of like mass-produced uh, corporate uh, stuff yeah. in the pop charts. Um, what what type of music do you find yourself like now that you're spending quite a lot of time creating as well? Do you find yeah. a lot of time to listen to music um, by you know newer acts and stuff, or are you so immersed in what um, you're? Doing? I find no, I I do I do listen, but it's really um, it's asymmetrical. Um, I'll actually spend a lot of you know like a couple of weeks just with my own stuff in my own head, and you know a lot of time you know when I'm driving, I don't have music on when I'm just at home, not doing that. I don't have music on just because I actually just need the space. Um, I, you know, but then when I'm, when I sort of swing out of that a little bit and, you know, I'll have a couple, listen quite obsessively. Like I'll find a song and I'll just go, I love that song. And then I'll listen to that song for weeks. Um, and, and then actually I'm, I'm, I, I become quite inspired by some of the musicians around me, like the actual musicians that I that I play with. Um, um, so that's a thing as well. And he's great. And he, um, I was playing jazz gigs with him, but then he, I got him to come and you know play in my band, you know, for my music. And um, and he's he plays the pedal steel. Wow. The and. And he's so great and he's so tasteful. Um, and so I was like, well, send me music with pedal steel. Um, and, um, oh, and who was it? But yeah, but then I just started listening to like pedal steel stuff. And now I'm going, oh man, I just love to write a song with pedal steel that he could play on. And it's just, it's sort of like that. Um, I write, I find I write a lot for the people around me. Um, you know, like I'll write for someone's voice or I'll write, for like a drummer and I like make this space in the song just so that they can like shine in that bit. And that's just my favorite thing because I know how they play and I know, like I know what they'll do. And so I sort of like create a space for that to happen. And I, and I love that. Um, and I find that really inspiring, like that sort of listening. Um, yeah, I love writing for other people. I think it's so, cause it like, it gets you out of your own thing. It forces you to just like do something totally different. Um, yeah. And in terms of the I don't know, I can't yeah. It's so the songwriting process like do you have a set way of doing things or is it different every time? Um I would say there's like there's a few set ways of doing things. Um I I like the problem solving aspect of it. So I, I find, you know, these different elements come together. I mean, there's the, the thing where you're just inspired by like whatever, it's whatever trigger it could be. You hear a chord on the piano and you go, wow, that's actually kind of cool. Or um, there was this one really cool thing that I did record. Um, there was a door closing and the air conditioning was like on full blast and it was going through the door and it made like this amazing, like seven or eight part harmony. It was crazy. And so I like pulled out my phone and recorded and then I like tried to sing that into my computer and it's sort of like it turned into its own thing. So you've got these like triggers, but then, but then you've actually got to like put that into like a structured thing. And um, I, yeah, I don't know. I think for me, you know, that's when, you know, that's when I do think about it and I go, well, I, I need to be here or it like, it needs to be different in this part. Like what serves the song rather than what do I, what would be the best thing for the song at this point? And then you sort of think about it more than, than feel it. Um, I don't know. I, I think lyrically I've learned 
to write to a sentiment. Not everything has to make sense. It just has to match the sentiment, I feel. Um, and, and I'm a bit bored about, of, you know, just writing about my feelings. I don't really want to do that. So I guess it's finding like really specific, um, I don't know, just like slice, slices of human nature and just going, I want to describe that like really, really specific feeling when this happens, you know? Why are you bored about writing about your own feelings? Um, well, actually, no, that's, that's probably untrue, but I, um, well, no, no, because I suppose that's the way that you do connect to the world, isn't it? But, um, I suppose writing from my perspective, I enjoy writing from other perspectives and I enjoy writing stories that aren't necessarily real, but it's like a framework for you to talk about a real thing. If that makes sense. Yeah, that does, that does make sense. And I guess after a while, like if you've done a lot of that, you might want to try something different. It doesn't mean that you can't return to it at a later stage. What about your plans yeah. to play live? Uh, are you planning on yeah. playing live? I mean, I'm not sure what the situation, from what I understand, the situation in Australia is not ideal with regards to the pandemic and all of that. Yeah. But yeah, when, if and when possible, and, and what yeah. life experience have you had so far? Sure. Um, well, uh, strangely enough, luckily enough, I'm insanely lucky in, in Darwin. I've somehow ended up in Darwin. I've got no clue how that happened, but that's where I am at the moment um, with a lovely group of people surrounding me. And, um, and live music is thriving here. Um, it's probably one of the few places in the world where that's actually happening. I mean, everywhere else in Australia, it's not. I mean, everywhere else is shut down at the moment. But um, no, but I mean, I'm playing a gig on Friday, playing next Friday, next Saturday, next month. Like, I'm, and I'm doing different things. Um, I'm playing, I'm actually playing in this really, for the first time ever, I'm playing keys in like a funk band. And like, it's just a really, really fun group of people. So that's great. Um, no, so I am actually doing um, a bunch of gigs here and it's 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 a needed thing for me. Um, of the of the two things of of writing and performing, it's it's my weaker thing. Um, I'm not saying I'm bad at it, but I'm just saying of the two things, um, that's you know it's it's good that I get to be in a space where I am doing that because you just you work stuff out as you go um yeah uh, well, yeah what are the other things apart from the funk band okay um well um so i'm doing i'm doing quite a bit of um quite a few original gigs um so that some some of that is with the band and some of that is just solo and to be honest i noticed that i get like a much better reaction when i'm solo which is weird and unexpected really? um yeah, yeah, I just, I didn't expect that, but that seems to, to be true somehow. Um, I do, I did, oh, I played a really fun thing the other day. I played the Karama Country Music Muster and I just played like some of my tunes, but like country music. I love country music um, and folk music. And that was just such a fun thing to do because I'm like, oh, I can play um, the Judds and Gillian Welsh and oh, just, um, Bonnie Raitt and like all of these cool songs um, and and then I played I don't know I've done a couple of acoustic things where I'm just on the guitar like doing finger picky folky singy stuff um, and that's just so nice because I just get to sing some of those songs I love um, I don't know so quite a few things I actually had a, a friend of mine get in touch with me he's a um, he's a sousaphone player and he wants to do like a, 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 a tuba vocal thing, which is cool. Um, I, I haven't even listened to it yet. I will after this and I'll get back to him. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> but like, this, yeah, I know. What, what, I've never what? heard of it. I have no idea. I haven't checked it out yet. But like there's stuff, do you know what I mean? Like there's a lot of different things and it's, um, it, yeah, it's a, a, a vibrant place to be at the moment. Yeah, it sounds incredible. Uh, and it sounds like you're yeah. doing lots of different projects, keeping you inspired. Well, how, how much time, you know, are you working like seven days a week? It sounds like you're pretty busy. I'm not working. Uh, uh, 
as in like music working or yeah music working like you... uh, no 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 I'm no I'm not uh, music working seven days a week um no I'm probably doing a gig or two a week at this point um and yeah and then just I guess focusing on um recording um and writing I've just been down south for three weeks and so I've just I sort of landed back in Darwin um a day before they locked down and so I've just sort of been um settling back here a bit too um yeah it, it it changes it this is quite a seasonal city um so I think for the next couple of months it will be really quite busy and then after that you know it's the it's build up and then the wet season and then that um from what I understand that changes quite dramatically I've been here for about for coming up on a year um so we'll see I'm not, I'm not quite sure um it might be it might be coming up to a quiet time I'm yeah I don't know it's hard to say and in mm. terms of your overriding aim with your music, like one thing that was particularly inspiring was to hear you say that what you want to do, or what, from what you said, what I'm getting out of that is yeah. that uh, you want to have a body of work that you can look back on and be yeah. really proud of. Uh, yeah. Do you care how many people it's heard by, or do you just want to know that you've written, like, as you say, 50, like really, really good songs by the end, like, amazing songs yeah look if I um I want to write music that I like and that I think is good um I mean yeah I care who hears I want people to hear it like I want I want people to hear the stuff that I write you know that I think is good um I think but I but I don't know first and foremost I just want to have written it do you know what I mean like I want to feel good about going I made this thing and I think it's good um yeah I mean and look and I think you know and I think it'll be songs but I think you know I think it will be music too um as in but you know that's a little down the track um you know like music without lyrics but um yeah I don't know like in, in its time um but no but I do I do want people to hear it and I think I I guess what I want is to just be in a place where I have access to just really amazing musicians who I can say, can you play this or can we try this? Um, and like, what about this? Or what if we like, so what happened if we did this? Um, you know, just to, just to facilitate that, that's what I want. And I want to write for other people too and collaborate because I find that really interesting and like I said it just I don't know it just opens up different doors to in terms of just ideas and like the way that you write um and I think you know like there's a world full of creative amazing musicians I just want to like connect with them do you know what I mean yeah well I think the fact that you're putting the music first uh is really really great mm -hmm such a great example for, for people listening people yes. who might be wanting to follow in your footsteps and write their own music and in terms of people hearing your music hopefully uh this podcast can play a small part in uh, thank getting you uh, yeah sometimes yeah. on air, your album and all the rest of your music i mean right from the word go this album like the song cowboy is incredible and throughout <laughs> the whole album uh it's it, i mean you can see that you've if you really do follow through and keep writing songs every year, there's going to be mm. some amazing stuff. So I really can't wait to hear thank it. You. I really appreciate you taking the time to come on the podcast. Alison, thank you so oh, much. Tom, thank you so much. No, it's been such a pleasure. I've enjoyed speaking with you. I feel like I've spoke too much, but it's, it's really lovely to no, meet that's you. That's the idea. I, if I've <laughs> too much, uh, it should be as little <laughs> speaking as possible. That's the key to a good interview. I hope I've, I hope you felt comfortable to speak enough rather than uh, me. Oh, yeah, no. No, I really did know, but it's, it's really lovely to meet you. And thank you. This episode is brought to you by Pact. Pact specialise in making travel easy for you with the beautifully designed Pact One. This innovative travel bag can be packed with as much as a suitcase, but it carries like a duffel bag. The Pact One is a bag that's been perfected with over five years of global travel testing spanning hundreds of thousands of miles. The Pact Coffee Kit provides you with everything you need to make barista quality coffee whilst on the move. 
It can be used anywhere you have water and electricity, so there will be no more poor quality coffee on your travels. Pact aren't only an amazing brand because of their products, which quite simply make your life better. They ensure fair working conditions for their factory employees and use eco-friendly materials and plastic-free packaging. You can use the code GREATEST for 15% off the Pact One or the coffee kit. Simply head to pactbags.com and use the code upon checkout. Pact, revolutionising your travel experience.